So in this video, I'm going to show how to make a plot similar to the plot that we see here for the stress concentration for a plate with a hole. And in particular, uh, one of the things that I'll often ask is to make, make a plot of the stress and show that we have a decaying stress distribution from a factor of three down to one uh, for the solution of a plate with a hole. Now, this solution we derived in a previous video and I want you to notice uh, a couple things. The, first of all, this coordinate system is set up such that theta starts here and goes around this way. So if I wanted to get to this position here, that would be a theta value of pi over 2 radians or 90 degrees. And the stress that I want to plot would be the sigma theta stress that would be lined up with the X direction of my coordinate system here. So we can think of that as the decaying sigma X stress. Now the way I often uh, will plot this is with the stress being applied in the other direction. But the way that uh, our author or the elasticity book that I've been using, uh, they, they turn it 90 degrees. So I would typically draw it something like this where it has the value of sigma here, three sigma here, and the value of uh, sigma at this location. So this is what we're going to do. So we're going to focus on this equation here. And of course, with theta is equal to pi over 2, pi over 2, if we have the cosine of 2 theta, then that's going to be equal to minus 1. And so this equation, I'm going to simplify down to be sigma is equal to sigma over 2, 1 plus, I'm actually going to do it this way, a over r quantity squared. And then this will turn this into a plus, since this is a minus 1, sigma over 2, 1 plus 3, a over r to the fourth power. All right, so this is the main equation that I'm going to use to create my plot. And it will be lined up in a similar way as this, I guess depending on how I set up my plot. I'm going to, go, going to try to reproduce this. All right, so I'm not going to worry about the sigma r and the tau r theta. Those will give the stresses anywhere that we want in this plate, as long as we're not in the hole. Um, but I'm only interested in plotting what's going on along this, this line. I'm only going to do one side of this. Of course, it's going to extend on the other side as well. Now, to simplify our work just a little bit, I'm going to make um, a couple of choices for some of these values. I'm going to say that sigma is equal to one unit. You can think of this as a megapascal or whatever you want, every unit of stress. And then um, I'm going to choose my whole size, my A radius, to be one unit. And then I'm going to look at different values of R as I go from R is equal to one unit, can't be any less than one unit, to whatever I want out here. And, uh, you know, I'm going to, let's start out with 100. We're going to see that we might want to refine it a little bit closer to the hole, um, you know, uh, to see what a nice plot would look like. All right, so with that, I'm going to pause right here and pull up um, Excel. All right, so here's my Excel worksheet. There's my equation that I'm going to use. So let's see. We're going to make a column for A. We're going to make a column for R. Uh, let's go ahead and make a column for A over R. And then we'll have a column for sigma. All right, so we said we'd take A is equal to 1, R will be 1, and of course A over R, you're going to let Excel do that calculation, and then our sigma, and I guess I should have a little subscript here, this is the sigma theta, it's going to be our far field sigma. Oh, 
fix that here in just a second. And we are far field sigma over 2 times this quantity, and then plus sigma over 2 times this quantity. All right, let me go back and fix this here real quick. So I don't want to confuse those two things. All right, and let's put in the equation here. Okay, so it's going to be one unit divided by two times this quantity, one plus this ratio squared plus one over two times one plus three times this ratio to the fourth power and like that okay so right at the edge of the hole we do get a stress concentration factor of three all right now i'm going to take uh, r and i'm going to change r um Let's see, I said from 1 to 100, let's uh, make it uh, initially 1 to 50, just to see what this looks like first. I'm putting that here, letting it do the work for me, populate that. The whole size stays constant. And then these two formulas I'll copy and I will paste here. Uh, so it's kind of interesting. Look how fast it drops down. It drops from 3 to 1.2 by going over another distance of a whole radius. So we're probably going to end up refining this in here, but let's make a plot. And to do that, let's see, I'm going to insert a plot. Uh, let's just make it a scatter. And let's see, there should be a select data. That's what I'm looking for. I'm going to add something. I'm going to use X values of... Um, we can do it in terms of the ratio, or we can do it in terms of R. Um, you know, maybe to make this non-dimensional, let's do it in terms of A over R. So we can look at this as a percentage uh, or a fraction, if you want to think of it that way, of the, the whole radius. And then the value that I have here. So by the time I got down to 50, I'm already at uh, 1 plus just a little bit more out to uh, 4 decimal places. Uh, let's see. And something weird happened here. In fact, let's do uh, let's change this around. Looks more like the, the chart. We might want to change the aspect ratio of this. Okay, so so here's the distribution. So the, the whole edge is uh, 
I probably need to do this with respect to R. So let me change this to F. The fraction is kind of weird because it gets smaller as you get further away from the hole. That's why it's making it look a little bit different. Okay. So what we have here, you see it's starting way up here, and it's dropping very quickly, and it's coming down. So as compared to the plot in the book, okay, they don't show this um, quite as steep as what we have it here. So we're plotting way out here somewhere. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to fill in some of these values to get a little nicer plot in between the three and where this drops down so quickly. All right, so for that, I'm going to pause, and I'm going to put in a whole bunch of values of R that are between 1 and 2. All right, so I put in a bunch of values, and so I kind of filled this out a little bit here. So you see the... The, the steepness of this stress gradient, it's really steep, but it, it it's really high here at 3, but it really drops off as we go through here. Of course, this is a solution for an infinite plate, but if you have a plate that is uh, 50 times the uh, whole radius, you know, the, the width is 50 times the whole radius, then I would say that's pretty close to an infinite plate. And you might even be able to back that off to 30 or even 20. Um, so finite width plates will mess with this distribution a little bit. And there are solutions for that. Uh, but it, uh, we can use the infinite plate solution for uh, plates that are narrower than what you might think in comparison to the whole radius. So if I were to show this, uh, let's see, let me take this. picture and copy it. If I were to bring it over here. I'd be showing the mirror image of this. hole would be about one unit radius and let's see if I can move that over to the right spot be something like that All right, so this is kind of what I was wanting uh, for that particular homework assignment. Again, I'll refer you to the solution of the, uh, the plate with a hole, the development of these equations, to get some more insight into where these particular equations come from. Uh, every engineer that does anything uh, mechanically inclined, mechanical, civil, aerospace, metallurgical engineer, uh, should know that a plate with a hole has a stress concentration factor of uh, 3 or thereabouts, depending on if it's an uh, infinite or finite width plate.